to show you how to convert back and forth between Fisher projections and wedge dash notation without using a model kit or assigning stereochemistry. First, draw your carbon skeleton in the traditional zigzag shape. It's not going to matter which way you draw your carbon skeleton. Notice in your carbon skeleton that you have some points that are pointed upwards and you have other places where the carbon skeleton points down. On the upward points, you're going to add your wedged bonds also pointing in the up direction and your down points are going to get wedged bonds pointed in the down direction. Don't add your dashed bonds yet. Number your Fisher projections starting at the top, working your way down to the bottom. Number your carbon skeleton starting at the right, working your way to the left. It's essential that you number from right to left. I would just visualize myself kicking the Fisher projection over to help me remember that carbon number one goes on the right. Now I want you to notice on your Fisher projection, you have some substituents that are over on the right-hand side of the molecule, some substituents that are on the left-hand side of the molecule. Also in your carbon skeleton, you have some wedged bonds that are pointed in the up direction with respect to the carbon skeleton, and you have other wedged bonds that are pointed in the downward direction. On the wedged bonds that are pointed up, you are going to place your substituents that come from the right-hand side of the Fisher projection, and your wedged bonds that point down are going going to get the substituents that come from the left-hand side of the Fisher projection. As a student, I would just remember the word upright to help me remember this. So this means that on carbon number two, because the wedged bond is pointed up, it is going to hold the substituent that comes from the right-hand side of the Fisher projection on carbon number two, which is a bromine. And at this point, we can go ahead and fill in the dashed bond on carbon two, which is to a hydrogen. On carbon number three, because the wedged bond points down, it is going to hold the substituent that comes from the left-hand side of the Fisher projection, which is the OH group, and then we can add that dashed bond to chlorine. And then on carbon number four, because our wedged bond points up, it will hold the substituent that is on the right-hand side of the Fisher projection, which is a hydrogen, and the fluorine will be on the dash. Here are a couple of examples of what this looks like. You can pause to look at these more closely. Uh, examples of what this looks like if you have only one chiral carbon or if you have a molecule that has an achiral carbon such as a ketone in the middle of the chain. Now here's an opportunity for you to try this out. Pause and see if you can replicate uh, or convert this into wedge dash notation. And here are two correct answers um, with the carbon skeleton being oriented in different directions. Both of these are the correct answer. Now, if you have to go from wedge dash notation into a Fisher projection, it can be a little bit trickier depending on what your wedge dash notation looks like. This whole method that I'm using relies completely on the wedges being like really front and center in our drawing. So if you have a carbon atom, like in this case, it doesn't even have a wedge showing, you're going to want to First of all, just modify this drawing so that it kind of matches the pattern that we use for this trick. And that involves, in my case, scooting this OH group over onto the side so that I can add the hydrogen atom that is on the wedge. Um, now also number your Fisher projection skeleton starting at the top, working your way down to the bottom, and then number your carbon chain starting at the right, going to the left. Carbon number one is just the methyl group. Carbon number two has the wedged bonds pointed up, which means that that hydrogen is going to end up on the right-hand side of the Fisher projection and the OH group will be on the left. Carbon number three has the wedged bond pointed down. That means that the OH group on carbon number three will be on the left side of the Fisher projection and carbon number four wedged bond pointed up. That means that the hydrogen on carbon four will be on the right-hand side. Now, last but not least, if you're dealing with a wedge dash notation for a molecule that has only one chiral carbon, this can be a little bit trickier because this is the typical way that we represent that molecule with the wedge either kind of angled off to the right or sometimes angled off to the left, which does not work with this method. So what I would encourage you to do is just physically rotate your paper uh, turn the molecule, turn your piece of paper so that the OH, or excuse me, so that the wedge is either sticking straight up or straight down so that this method works. Maybe you need to redraw it or maybe just physically turn your paper around in your hands. And then when you get it in the right spot, then uh, we're good to go. Number from right to left, number from top to bottom. Number one is a bromine. Number two has the wedge sticking up, which means that that OH group is going to be on the right-hand side, the dash will be on the left, and the methyl will be on the bottom.